OTV in stereo, Channel 9 in Toronto, Cable 8. Wing is a CTV special presentation. CTV's Live It Up will not be seen tonight, but will return next week at its regular time. Tonight, live from Toronto, it's the Muscle Bodies 10th Anniversary Spectacular. With your hosts, Brent Lamb and Trisha McGillivray. Musical guests, the sensational group, Uvula Box. Look at that chump celebrating 10 years of his little YouTube cartoon. But to understand what happened, you have to go back. Back to the beginning. The real beginning. Back about 45 years before this celebration. To the day it all started. Back to 1979. I was in grade 5 in my hometown of Glencoe, Ontario. On that day, a painter visited our art class. He painted religious scenes. He painted any religious figure that was close to God as a bodybuilder. He explained to us that, by his logic, the closer a person was to God, the bigger the muscles they should have. Jesus, as the Son of God, had the biggest muscles. Proximity to God made one physically perfect. In one painting, Jesus wore denim overalls, but no shirt, because they didn't have t-shirts 2,000 years ago. Why is Jesus wearing overalls, I asked one of my classmates, who said, Because he's a carpenter, idiot. I had overalls in the third grade, and I liked them, but I always wore a shirt. Later on in high school, I attended a visual arts program in the city. There was an intensive amount of drawing in our first term. They don't teach you drawing just so you learn how to draw. They teach you drawing so you learn how to see. They would sit us in front of a corner of the room and say, draw the corner exactly as you see it. And most of us would draw our idea of what the corner looked like, not the corner as we literally saw it. We had to learn to separate the concept of a corner from our perception. We also had to overcome any discomfort with nudity pretty quickly because we had regular life drawing classes with alternating male and female models. Our male model was a dark haired lanky guy who made me think that if anyone was Jesus, it was going to be this guy. One day during a break, the lanky guy stepped off the podium and struck up a conversation with a female classmate. While talking to her, he had an inadvertent erection. After that, we didn't have a male model again until the exam. Our exam model was a big boxy 1950s type bodybuilder. The type you'd see in those comic book ads where the guy gets sand kicked in his face. He had old fashioned hair and wore dark sunglasses. And he was like an empty shell, like no one was there. One afternoon at the end of my last year of high school, we were waiting on the school steps for the ride back to our village and one of our classmates walked by. He'd been a pretty slim guy, but suddenly he'd blown up into a tanned bodybuilder and was wearing overalls without a shirt. He'd taken steroids as an art project. Call it math, or call it the natural vibrating energy of the universe, or call it supernatural forces. But something started there, and nothing could stop it. Six months later, I was at university in Toronto. One day, I was hanging out with the former Miss Teen Canada in a friend's residence room. This wasn't just any Miss Teen Canada. The pageant runner-up lived on a farm just down the road from us, so our entire town had watched the pageant, including myself. Miss Teen Canada had been Miss Teen Toronto, and the consensus in town was that the big city, yet again, had shoved the rural folks aside. Although a couple of years later, the identical twin sister of the runner-up did become Miss Teen Canada. At one point, my friend looked up at the door and said, 
Oh, former Miss Teen Canada, it's your boyfriend. And standing in the door was former Miss Teen Canada's boyfriend, a short, muscular guy with long hair and big muscles. And he wore overalls with no shirt. During school, I worked part time as a lifeguard. I used to lifeguard and teach swimming at the downtown YMCA in Toronto. And there was a bodybuilder who occasionally used the pool, despite being too heavy to swim. Muscle sinks. He had the most perfectly sculpted muscles I have ever seen before or since. Lines and curves, subtle and sublime. One afternoon, he came into the pool and just stood there, waiting. And he waited a long time. Finally, he was joined by another bodybuilder. I couldn't believe it. It was a 1950s bodybuilder from our grade 11 exam, still wearing those sunglasses. One day that summer, I was walking across the Bloor Street Viaduct and almost bumped into someone walking in the opposite direction. I stopped startled, and when I looked up, it was a sculpted bodybuilder. He was wearing overalls, with no shirt. I saw his face up close, and it was twisted and creased, and full of rage. At the end of university, my girlfriend and I shared an apartment with her sister, who, to this day, is athletic and works out. During that time, she entered a bodybuilding competition. The religious painter back in grade 5 had this notion that the state of being a bodybuilder was a permanent blessing from God, not connected to actions just bestowed by association. But competition training wasn't like that at all. Even though she was already fit and enjoyed working out, she had to focus and schedule and eat properly and work hard with lots of focus towards timing a muscular peak to coincide with the competition day. And then to my horror, I learned the truth. I was naive. The competition wasn't even the end of the process. After a competition, it's necessary to maintain focus and gradually ease down from that peak. Being a bodybuilder was not a permanent state of bliss, but a fragile temporary state of control. In the apartment, we had a covered porch at the back that I used as a paper mache studio where I made animals and aliens and retail displays. Her boyfriend at the time used to come back and sit and talk to me as I worked at 3 a.m. He would pick my brain about the meaning of life and sometimes run relationship questions by me. Or he would just sit there quietly and creep me out. One night he seemed especially upset. There's this guy at her gym and he's obsessed with her. There's something wrong about him. It's just a gym crush, I said. I'd heard about this guy at the gym, but he sounded like a sad little puppy dog. No, he said. He's not right. One night a friend and I rented some movies and hung out. We were woken early the next morning by someone knocking at the door. I went down the stairs, opened the door, and there standing on the street was a bodybuilder with long hair wearing overalls and no shirt. His face wasn't twisted and angry. His face was gentle and innocent and meek, like a baby. He was holding a large bouquet of red roses and asked with tender, sad eyes, Is she in? Before I could say anything, my eyes caught something on the other side of the street. There, standing in front of the shopper's drug mart, was the 1950s bodybuilder from our drawing exam, just standing there, looking at us. A chill shot through me. I stumbled backwards and the bodybuilder with the roses took a step towards me. The scent of the roses burned my eyes. Are you okay? He leaned in further. She's not in, I blurted, grabbed the flowers and slammed the door. I ran upstairs and looked out the front window across the street and there, the 1950s bodybuilder was looking right at me. I pulled the blinds down and ran from the room. But that was it. Everything stopped. The bodybuilder's infatuation ended immediately and he stopped coming around. The 1950s bodybuilder seemed to disappear. Life went on. There were breakups and roommates and new apartments and new relationships and the years went on. But in the background, it felt like I was living just on the edge of a current that was still churning. Rock and roll, rock and roll. Pound your keys like a big strong man. Rock and roll, rock and roll. Obligation, understand. Triple light, fantastic. Posturate, reactic. The key is your injunction. Use executive function. Nearly a decade later, after the end of an intense relationship, I started going to the gym myself. Just to, like, heal. I didn't get muscles. I did a lot of cardio and got really slim. And then... It was a fitness instructor whose classes I attended occasionally, and he had huge muscles. His thighs were so large, you wouldn't think he'd be able to run, but he could keep a pace that the class could barely match. 
One day I was leaving the gym and I spotted that instructor rushing in for his class. He was wearing overalls with no shirt. I turned to one of the other instructors and said, Ron, he's wearing overalls. And Ron replied, well, yeah, he's a carpenter. He works for that guy, Gary. Oh, you know Gary. He's great. One hot summer day, I had a work appointment, and a consultant was coming to my home office. When I met her, she was wearing oversized denim overalls with just a tube top underneath. She was late for her next meeting and asked if she could change into her professional clothes. Unknown to both of us, she misplaced the overalls and left them behind. They had fallen behind a dresser. As part of coping with my breakup, I started painting and refurbishing my apartment to get a fresh start. While rearranging the furniture, I stumbled across the missing overalls, but I forgot their origin. They fit and were comfortable, so I started using them as painting overalls. Meanwhile, at the gym, I developed a rather intense crush on one of the regulars. I had fallen into a dark depression after the breakup. The woman had great energy in class and was a good distraction from a terrible time. At night, I lay awake in bed, my mind racing with thoughts about the bodybuilder with the red roses. Was I becoming that guy? No, he liked the sister's blonde hair. This woman at the gym had dark hair. He liked her athletic tan. This woman was kind of quirky. And as a bodybuilder, he appreciated toned abs and muscles. And this woman had, well, uh, toned abs and muscles too, I guess. And one more thing. The sister was totally unavailable, and I think that provided a safe boundary for the bodybuilder. And the woman at my gym, it turned out, was also completely unavailable. She had a boyfriend, and yeah, who was that guy I'd been hearing about? Gary. But no, I wasn't like the Roses guy. He was pathetic and sad. I was healing and resilient. One day in the gym change room, one of my fitness classmates was in a pickle. His date for the evening had cancelled, and he was stuck with a bouquet of red roses. Can you take the roses, he asked. My downstairs neighbor had been struggling with dating herself, so I thought she might appreciate the flowers and I took them for her. He shrugged. I'm gonna go grab a beer with Gary instead. Gary? Just then, the 1950s bodybuilder from years before from our grade 11 drawing exam emerged from the showers. Hey, you know Gary, right? Gary just stood there silently behind those dark sunglasses. He didn't say a word. They left. Then I opened my locker and there was a horrible sight. At some point, house paint had spilled into my gym bag and everything in it was smeared with latex paint. Only the overalls, which were hanging on a hook, were clean. I'd have to wear them home without a shirt. I stumbled out of the changing room in my overalls with no shirt, my disproportionately long skinny arms holding the bouquet of flowers, feeling like I was in one of those dreams where you forget to wear your pants. It was dusk. I pushed through the inside door of the entryway and at the same moment the woman I had that intense crush on walked in through the outside doors and we stopped startled face to face. She stared at me. I'd almost walked right over her. I stared back, both of us frozen. I didn't know what to say. My heart was shredded by emotions, the pain of the breakup, the intense infatuation with the woman standing right in front of me, the horror of Gary, the 1950s bodybuilder. I steadied myself. I took a breath and in a hoarse gasp I said, I am Jesus now. Ah! <laughs>